What's up guys? Today we're going to take a look at five distros that I think are the best for people who are new to GNU Linux. Number five is Ubuntu. Ubuntu is probably the first distro site that you would have been led to if you googled the question, what is the best Linux distro for beginners? It's easy to use, it has a pretty easy to navigate user interface, and a community that can help you with most of the issues that you'll come across on this distro. Also, if you're running Ubuntu 16.04 or later, you have Snap integration ready to go without any extra configuration necessary, which makes a lot of sense considering that SnapD and the Ubuntu distro are developed by the same company. Snaps can be very useful for new users because they bundle together packages and dependencies, so all you have to do to install a particular piece of software without having to worry about any dependencies is to just install the snap package. Now, although the snap method of installing software is easier for noobs, it's very different than the traditional method of installing packages through a package manager. And as a result, this makes Ubuntu very different from almost any other distribution. Many people make the switch to Linux in the first place to get away from proprietary software and bloat, that you see on many other operating systems like Windows. But snaps break both of these rules. While the software itself is still open source, it's distributed from a proprietary, canonical, specific source, and you have to create an account with them if you want to host your software there. And because snaps ship all of a package's dependencies together with that package, you can very quickly bloat up your system with duplicate copies of dependencies if you install multiple snaps that have those same dependencies. And finally, although Ubuntu's user interface is very clean and modern, it's laid out quite a bit differently from the UI that you would see on Windows. And since most new Linux users are coming from Windows, they might find the transition a little bit harder because of this. Number four is Elementary OS. As this distro's name implies, it is, well, elementary. It has a simple yet elegant design, very similar to the Mac OS. In fact, Elementary OS is the Linux distro I would recommend to anybody that is switching to GNU Linux from Mac OS. The settings manager is very simple, very easily laid out, and you don't have to worry about going through five or six levels deep into a context menu just to find things. The multitasking view of Elementary OS is also quite elegant, and everything in the UI just goes together really well. It's also one of the few distros that will use your full screen resolution out of the box in most cases without any additional software configuration. Elementary OS is based on Ubuntu's long-term support release, so pretty much all of the software that is available in Ubuntu will be available on Elementary OS as well. Elementary OS doesn't come with Snap support out of the box. However, it is easy to install. You simply have to update your system from the terminal and then install Snap-D. Now, like I said a few minutes ago, Elementary OS is designed to look like Mac OS. So again, if you're coming from Windows, like most people who are going to be switching to Linux, then this distro may be harder to settle into because it's laid out like a Mac and there's no such thing as minimizing an Elementary OS. So switching from Windows to Elementary OS would be very similar to switching from Windows to a Mac, at least as far as navigating the user interface is concerned. Number three is Linux Mint. Those of you who have been watching the channel for a while now know that Linux Mint is one of my favorite Linux distributions. It's the first distro that I have used long term, and it's very easy to install. It comes with a great suite of software. Its layout is very similar to Windows, which is really what made the transition for me from Windows 7 to GNU Linux that much easier. It's fast, and it just works. Linux Mint also comes with a variety of desktop environments, including Mate, Cinnamon, and XFCE. 
At first, this might be a bit overwhelming for someone who has been conditioned by operating systems like Windows or Mac OS that give you very limited customization options, let alone the choice of installing a different desktop environment. But this is a healthy step in the right direction since the world of Linux is going to be full of choices and starting off with making a choice about what desktop environment you want seems like a good place to start. This also makes it easier for Linux Mint to support a wider range of hardware and aesthetic choices. If you're installing Mint on very low-end hardware, then you'll probably want to opt for XFCE, one of the lightest desktop environments that are out there. If you want to get a little fancier and customize your desktop, especially if you want it to look more like Windows, then you can opt for Cinnamon. Linux Mint also doesn't support snaps, in fact, it's made a bit of ruckus in the Linux community by being explicitly against snaps since they violate the Unix philosophy, which I talked about earlier, how they do that. But it is possible to install snaps on Mint, although it's a little bit tougher than elementary OS. You'll have to remove the nosnap.pref file and then update the system, and then you can install snapd and install snap packages with snapd. Number two is Peppermint OS. Peppermint OS is another easy to use distro that is based on Ubuntu's long-term support. It pretty much takes a lot of the things that made Linux Mint really great, like having a user interface that's similar to Windows and the Mint install software manager, but it makes them even greater with a web app manager called ICE. ICE removes the need for a new user to learn something like LibreOffice, at least as long as they have an internet connection, because with a simple click of this application, they can access Microsoft Office online after logging in with their Microsoft account. ICE also manages to do this in a less bloated fashion than just opening up Office online in your web browser, since it strips away all of the unnecessary features and distractions of your browser, and it just loads that web page directly. Because ICE is essentially creating a minimal web page for you to use, you can also create your own custom web applications with access to any website or online service that you need with the simple click of a button. Peppermint OS also comes with a very unique desktop environment, which is a mix of LXDE and XFCE. Both of these desktops on their own are snappy, lightweight, and don't use a lot of resources. And when they're combined together, that still remains true. So Peppermint OS is great for those with older or low spec hardware that want to breed new life into their laptop. However, this combination of desktop environments can make Peppermint OS a little bit more tricky to customize since you have to go through multiple context menus and find all of the options that you're looking for. If you're like most people who are new to Linux though, and you don't really plan on doing much customization early on, then this shouldn't be that much of a problem for you. Now before we go to my number one Linux distro for beginners, I'd like to thank you for watching this far in, and if you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing with notifications on. So the number one Linux distro that I would recommend for beginners is Manjaro. Manjaro is essentially Arch Linux, but without the smugness and time waste that comes from installing Arch Linux through a minimal CD by entering commands into a TTY, and oftentimes you'll have to pull up the Arch Wiki or some other set of instructions on your phone or maybe on another laptop to follow, and that can obviously get really annoying and it's not suitable for anybody who's going to be new to Linux. Manjaro, it just gives you an easy to follow GUI installation guide with a few more configuration options than the other distros that I've mentioned so far. So there are four installation options, one with XFCE, one with KDE, and one with GNOME. But then there is an architect version which gives you almost the same flexibility and control as that Arch Linux minimal CD, but again, without the hassle. So from here, you can choose your desktop environment, or you can even select a window manager from within this setup. You can choose your kernel, 
and you can choose your formatting type across all of these or that single architect ISO. And if you aren't as comfortable with this choice, uh, which can of course be a little bit overbearing for some new Linux users, then you can just settle for one of the options with a pre-configured desktop environment. And all of these options also give you the choice of using FreeOffice, which is an office suite that installs locally on Linux that has a look and feel very similar to Microsoft Office. The best thing about Manjaro though is the fact that it's based on Arch Linux, which means that you have access to all of the packages that are installable with Pac-Man, as well as the AUR, and steps that are in the Arch Wiki can pretty much be followed exactly to specifications on Manjaro. And when it comes to installing your packages, whether that be from Pac-Man or the AUR, you can do all of these things through a GUI front end called Pac-Mac. And it's like having the power of Arch Linux at your fingertips and access to all of those packages without even having to open a terminal. And if you do end up using Linux for years and years, and one day you decide that you're too cool for Manjaro, you can make an easy transition to Arch Linux because you're already used to using that package manager. So then you can switch to an Arch Linux setup, print out your NeoFetch, and show people on Reddit how cool you are. So that's it for this lineup, guys. If you're new to Linux, let me know what distro you decided to go with or which one you picked when you were new in the comments below. And be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe, and have a nice day.